Hi guys, how are you doing? So today we're going to take a look at the Corsair A500. Now this is behemoth of a CPU cooler. Now I don't typically go for air coolers because I think they're big, ugly. This one actually looks pretty nice to be fair. Um, I saw it um, at the beginning of 2020 um, when it was released. It was about £80-90 pounds and I thought yeah that's a bit much for me. Um, but just before Christmas it was on scan, delivered £35. Pounds. I thought Do you know what, let's give it a go. So what we're going to do today is we're going to unbox it, we're going to test it and basically see if it's uh, worth the money. Let's do it. Okay, so this is the core itself. It is massive, as you'd expect. It's got two uh, 120ml 120 fans there. Um, yeah, it's just chunky as anything. Beautiful, so we've got um, four heat pipes here and four on the other side. So obviously that's gonna help us um, dissipate that heat. So yeah, that's uh, fantastic. And then here, we have a box of accessories. So firstly we have a, have a manual. A splitter for the fans. And then we've got our AMD uh, retention brackets. And our Intel ones. We have some TXM50 um, thermal paste. Never used it before, um, and we probably will today. And then we've got three cable ties. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go set it up and uh, have some fun. Right guys, so I've just put the uh, the back on the on the motherboard, put a couple of screws in, and what we're using um, is the 11 5X uh, screws. And, and while I'm at it, I'm going to take the RAM out because I'm unsure as to kind of how it's all going to fit in. So, it'll make my life a little bit easier with installation. Okay, so next we get these brackets. I'm going to install them as per the manual. Okay guys, you may have to push those down a little bit, they don't just go in as easy as you'd like. And now what we're going to do is put these screws on top. Voila. Um, so now we need to remove this and you just lift it up and it's held in place. And it's just held in place by those four, four little plastic clips. Be sure to take this out. That's not good for cooling. cables that are just tucked inside so to remove those okay I don't know if you can see down there but inside there's a couple of screws and that's what we need to screw down onto uh, to the, these bits here so I'm just going to do that quickly also when you put it in um, it's going to be oops, lazy. it's going to be this way um, so the, uh, the fan is exhausting that way. Now get your branded screwdriver and uh, screw it down. So I'm alternating between the two because I want an equal pressure. So I've just, I'm feeling a little bit of tension there. So I'm going to stop 
and now I'm going to uh, just finish off the other side. And just so you can get the full effect of this. Lovely jubbly. So now I'm just going to hook up the fans and uh, do some V-roll for you. So today's comparison is going to be with the H100i RGB Pro XT. Now is it fair? I don't think so to be honest. But the thing is, if you're going to buy the A500, it's got to have comparable cooling. Now they do have similarities um, in that they both have ML120 fans and that's where it ends really. Now the A500 can be got from Scan at the moment for £40 and the H100i for £110. But is there really £70 difference in cooling? Let's find out. So if we take a look at the test system, it's in the fractal design defined 7, we've got Arctic P12 and P14 fans, and we're running the 10700K at stock. So when it comes to the testing, what we did was did Valley for 30 minutes, we then went on to Cinebench and we did 5 runs of that, I then rendered a video, and then also played Battlefield 1 for 20 minutes. So the results are showed on screen, and what we'll do now is we're going to change the cooler, and we're going to do the testing again, with the H100i. So as you can see the system is exactly the same. The only difference is obviously that the AIO has changed and instead of having the top mounted fans we've got the AIO there so pretty much as we were. So what we did next was to basically repeat the testing previously. Um, so 30 minutes of Valley, 5 runs of Cinebench, uh, rendered a video and played some Battlefield. So in case you haven't been paying attention um, what we're going to do now is we're going to compare the results and um, see which one's the better value. Now for the results. Um, yeah, I was very, very surprised if I'm honest. Now, Valley, there was a three degree difference. Cinebench, there was six degrees. DaVinci Resolve, four degrees. And Battlefield, six degrees. Um, yeah, this cooler is very, very impressive. And at a £40 price point, it's really hard to kind of um, say don't go for it really the only thing is you know like I said previously now I don't like air coolers because they're big they're bulky um, as you can see from the images it covers up the RAM it hides away some of your RGB if you're having that but this cooler is versatile so what you can do is you can put any fans you want that are basically 120 um, I've got a couple of examples up on the screen and it looks really good is it the best cooler out there no it's not you know that's that's kind of um proven by the fact that we've um, got an AIO and it beats it but does it beat it by enough honestly no um, now that doesn't mean that the AIO isn't as good as it could be um, it's just that this cooler is fantastic so if you're in the market for an air cooler I don't think you go too wrong by getting this um, has it changed my mind no I'm, I'm gonna stick with AIOs that's just just the way I am but it's changed my mind that air coolers aren't very good um, this is going to be great in a system um, where it's low maintenance um, and you just want to whack it in there and just forget about it. Um, I'm really impressed. Guys, anyway, I've got to go now. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.